So Trump's debate performance last night was a complete game changer, and that's the subject of the riff. On the day after the presidential debate, most of the media focus is on the catastrophic performance of Joe Biden, who imploded before our eyes. He looked old, hard to understand, confused, resorted to mudslinging, name-calling as the debate wore on. Maybe Mr. Biden realized he was digging a deeper and deeper hole for himself. Who knows? All right. I don't really blame the media for focusing on all that. Or the related question for the morning after is, uh, how are the Democrats going to replace Joe Biden? We'll get to that in the show. But, and it's a huge but, Biden's crash and burn should not obscure just how masterful Donald Trump's performance was. He kept his cool. He had a straight CEO-type demeanor. He was sharp. He was energetic. And his content on issues across the board that voters truly care about was superb. He crushed it on inflation, taxes, regulations, and jobs. In other words, the positive, optimistic, prosperity, and opportunity message that is always a political winner. Now, take a listen to Mr. Trump in the early part of the debate. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. All right. Joe Biden was really helpless since the facts are so clear. Biden tried the usual lies about inheriting inflation and a disastrous economy. But Trump easily vanquished those arguments with some factoids and a strong narrative. You know, Mr. Trump clearly had done his homework. He was ready. Joe Biden spent a week at Camp David in an airplane hangar rehearsal twice a day with 16 or more advisors and, frankly, was completely befuddled and unable to put two sentences together to defend his record in the face of Trump's relentless attacks on the issues. Many of us hope Mr. Trump will continue his campaign message that successful policies to grow the economy and keep the peace would bring unity. Take a listen to this one. My retribution is going to be success. What we did was incredible. We re rebuilt the military. We got the largest tax cut in history, the largest regulation cut in history. The reason he's got jobs is because I cut the regulations that gave jobs. But he's putting a lot of those regulations back on. All of the things that we've done. All right. Time and again, Trump returned to the issues of Joe Biden's border catastrophe and the related crime wave that has threatened public safety all across the country. Again and again, Mr. Trump talked about the border and the economy, his meat and potatoes. Biden was unable to deal with it. Then Biden starts slinging mud, calling Trump names, and, of course, bringing up January 6, 2021. Now, on this point, Trump delivered what I thought was an absolutely brilliant response, which may well have been the most bone-crushing, game-changing moment of the entire debate last night. Take a listen to this. On January 6th, we had a great border. Nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. On January 6th, we had the lowest taxes ever. We had the lowest regulations ever. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. I mean, that was really something very, very clever. And then he went on to remind people that Nancy Pelosi is the one who stopped the 10,000 National Guard troops. But in any way, at that point, with the bone-crushing response Mr. Trump made about January 6th, the match could have been and should have been called off. It was a TKO, a technical knockout in boxing terms. And thereafter, Joe Biden literally sunk to grade school name-calling and virtual gibberish. Now, on abortion... Mr. Trump was equally deft, defending the Supreme Court decision to move the matter to the states. And then the former president emphasized his view that to preserve exclusions for rape, incest, and the life of the woman. Then Trump correctly pointed out how radical and extreme the Democrats are on this issue. Take a listen to this. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. Now, at that point, Mr. Biden responds, launches into this incredibly offensive and irrational stream of consciousness 
about the dangers for young woman, women in different places. Just take a listen to this. It's beyond belief. The idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in. To, they talk about that. But here's the deal. There's a lot of young women who are being raped by their, by their in-laws, by their, by, by their spouses, brothers and sisters. By, oh, just, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, does anybody have any idea where that came from, what he was talking about, what was its relevance, what was the context, or if it had anything to do with abortion? But Mr. Trump quickly reposted by repeating the migrant crime wave, which has swept the country as a result of Mr. Biden's open border policies. And of course, unfortunately, we have seen awful, monstrous violence, rapes and murders. Anyway, that stymied Biden even more. Now, look at this debate, in my view, will be a game changer. It's going to threaten Biden's candidacy. We'll talk about that later in the show. But the reality is Biden was thrashed by Donald Trump on the issues. Mr. Biden may have had a cold. He may be too old. He may be cognitively impaired. He may have dementia. I cannot attest to any of those medical issues. Here's what I know. The last two years in his campaign to return to the White House, Donald Trump has emphasized issues of economic prosperity, higher take home pay for working folks of all stripes and colors, closing the border, restoring public safety and returning to an America first peace through strength foreign policy. It is an optimistic, mainstream, common sense platform that is going to carry him back to the White House. You wait and see. And that's the riff.